uh, Uncle Fezzi's glass blowing hot shop tinkering temple. So, I'm going to start this video out by saying that what I am doing is not recommended to do. Uh, not in any way, shape, or form. If you do what I am doing and you burn your house to the ground, that's on you. Um, survival of the fittest. This type of equipment is designed to be used by simpletons. Um, flat out. There's no doubt about it. What I am doing to this equipment is something that's for tinkerers and people that with a, a little bit higher level of fiddling abilities beyond plugging in a single hose. I've been blowing glass for close to 20 years now, uh, on and off for 20 years. Uh, I started in 2000. Uh, I went hard until about 2005. Uh, the main reason that I stopped blowing glass was getting bottled oxygen into my house where I was working was an absolute nightmare. I have a new facility here. Getting the bottles in and out of the house isn't so big of a deal. Uh, the bigger deal is I'm getting old, fat, and lazy and humping these bottles down to the oxygen supply house and getting them swapped out is quite frankly a pain in the ass. So over the last 20 years, I, as soon as I started blowing oxygen and had to move these bottles, which are now 50 bucks a piece, I might add, and only last eight to 12 hours of working time, I've been looking into different types of, of home oxygen generating equipment. Uh, 20 years ago, you couldn't buy these machines that put out five liters a minute. The best you could do is three liters a minute uh, on a good day. They're not designed to do what I'm doing with them. I am totally, I can't stress it enough, what I am doing is sketchy. Oxygen does not burn. But I can tell you right now that if you have an oxygen concentrator running in a room and something catches fire, it's going to go off like Apollo 1 and hopefully the power will get shut off to the machine before you burn, before it goes off like a rocket. So, these machines put out about, on a good day, pushing them as hard as they'll go, these two machines separately will put out five liters of 94 to 96% pure oxygen per minute. That's pushing them to their absolute maximum. This piece of equipment here in the center is what's called a home fill oxygen compressor. Now, there are systems out there where you combine separate pieces of equipment, you can buy a controller for them and a compressor and all this other stuff. There's a couple manufacturers, High Volume Oxygen, Oxygen Frog, um, a couple other ones. Uh, those are the two that I looked into pretty seriously. Those systems started about $4,000. As it stands right now, I'm about $2,000 into this project if you include the plumbing that I haven't bought yet. Should shoot a little oxygen into my cigarette and it won't go out. Now, if these bottles are 50 bucks a piece and I'm burning one a week, that's a hundred, that's $1,200 a year, give or take. Like I said, if, when I say I'm $2,000 into this project, I'm pushing it. I'm, that's, that's actually a little bit of an exaggeration. I paid 1100 for this. I paid 500 for this. So, uh, so that's 1600 math in my head, um, for this. And now I need about $50 worth of fittings and some hose to get this all rigged up. Oh, and I need a whip hose for this. So this, this unit here is designed to take a portable oxygen bottle that clips into this thing. Um, and those little portable oxygen bottles are only this big. They literally would last like two seconds. Now the next question, why don't I run directly off of the oxygen concentrators? Well, in my previous video, I showed me running directly off of this oxygen concentrator using this mini CC torch. Now, in that video, 
I kind of explain how I feel about this torch um, and how I feel about this torch. So mechanically, this torch, the GTT Phantom, requires a certain amount of pressure to keep the valves operating properly and to keep the face of the torch from overheating. Oh. If the face of the torch overheats, it has to be sent back to Willie and Wally and they have to re resurface the face of the torch with a machine. And that's expensive. It, that's nuts. I'm not doing that. So I need to run higher pressure oxygen. The higher pressure oxygen is going to come out of these tanks. So the game plan here is to daisy chain these two oxygen concentrators together into this compressor, which will then operate off of a compressed cylinder. These cylinders from the, from the, the supplier come charged at about two, about 2000 PSI. Um, if you get a good fresh one, it'll be about 2200 PSI, um, which is an insane amount of pressure. Um, this bottle is empty. It's clearly marked as empty. This bottle is full, that's why it still has a safety cap on it. If this one tips over and knocks the valve off, I'll be pissed, but it's not going to be overly exciting. Um, so whenever you move these things, you want to make sure that you have the, the safety valve or the safety cap on it. I don't have the safety cap on this because I wanted to show this T fitting here that I'm going to be using. The other thing that I have with this torch is a manifold that I built. I've talked about the manifold in a couple of my other videos. So this is the manifold. This is a three-way splitter. It's actually, yeah, this is a three-way splitter. So there's two going in and three coming out because my Phantom is a four-barb torch. Now, I'm gonna pop these plugs out of here. I'm gonna put new barb fittings in here and I'm gonna run new high-pressure hose to the CC. The, the, the hose that I've been using for the CC here, and this drives me nuts, is this, uh, this vinyl, uh, this clear vinyl tubing. And that's what it is. This is clear vinyl tubing. This is for your fish tank. Okay. Um, and that's, that's sketchy as all get out. Um, yeah, it's just, that's just totally, totally, totally unacceptable. Especially if I'm going to be running 30 PSI through it. I'm fairly sure that this hose will take 30 PSI. But my Mini CC gets hot. As a matter of fact, I'm, I had put uh, this tape on here. I put this aluminized duct tape. This is actual real duct, D-U-C-T, tape. Um, NIOSH tape to protect this vinyl from um, from heat from the torch. Well, the problem is the torch or heat from radiant heat from the torches and uh, dropping a piece of hot glass on it. You drop a piece of hot glass on this vinyl, it, it's it's going to melt instantaneously, melt right through it. You better hope it's not your fuel line. Because if you do, it's going to be really exciting. Um, that's why you never leave a Bic lighter on your bench. Uh, if you absolutely positively insist on lighting your torch with a lighter, you use either a dead Bic lighter that you've already popped the hole in or you use a Zippo. Or a Sparker is what you're supposed to use. But I don't like Sparkers anymore. And I, I don't like the Sparker anymore. Uh, you could use a Piezo. Just a Piezo igniter is a better option for that. But, so the game plan... Oh, and this one also has um, heat tape on it. So this actually is just good old fashioned. This is good old fashioned duct tape, which is getting aged. So I'm probably going to, um, this is good. This is actual duct tape, duct, D-U-C-K tape or gaffer tape. Um, I'm going to actually remove this gaffer tape and then I'm going to redo all of these lines. Now that you'll notice that I have green and uh, this is green and red. Um, this is actual torch hose. 
I don't want to buy 50 feet of expense or 25 feet of expensive torch hose to, and cut it up. So, and the other thing is these torches, none of them come with actual fittings, which I find to be, as an OCD kind of guy, I find that to be very disturbing. These torches should come with fittings uh, and instead they come with barb fittings. Granted, it's not a ton of pressure, but you know, for, you know, 1500 bucks, it might actually have fittings on it. You know what? I'm, I'm speaking out of turn here. It's been so long since I took that apart, I'm not sure. Notice I'm using scissors and not a razor blade to cut, cut this. Sure, I will break my neck. I'm gonna do a whole video on how I finished and built this manifold. When I did all this stuff 20 years ago, <laughs> YouTube didn't exist. Okay, yeah, I was right. Ugh, what a mess. I hate duct tape. Yeah, so these are barb fittings off of here. These are swedged barb fittings from GTT, which I should probably leak check. It's nice tubing, actually. Hose, the hose that comes off them is really nice. Um, now, you can buy your torches, especially from GTT, you can buy your torch already set up to with gauges and everything. So that's another thing I wanted to talk about real quick is... These gauges, uh, these are actually Harris gauges, they're pretty good gauges. Um, I do need to replace this nut uh, because I have, I have bo boogered this nut up over the decades. So I'm gonna replace this nut. This is a GL540 or a GS540. I'd have to look it up, I, I'll put it, in exactly what it is. It's a 540, but it's either a GL or a GS 540 <coughs> for the oxygen. I use an internal propane. Oh, haha, <laughs> there you go. It's a CGA 540, which is this connection here, which goes to an is, is what your oxygen connection is. This is a CGA 510, which is an internal fuel fitting for a propane tank. So you could use an OPD, which is the black fitting that looks like this. Of course, mine's green because mine's high pressure. Um, I'm not gonna use this fitting or this regulator. This is, this is, this is going, it's gonna go back into my turkey fryer. Uh, but a regular acetylene bottle fitting will not work with this. Acetylene bottles are out. This is this is a special uh, this is a specialized propane fitting for th this tort this that, uh, for this fuel gauge. Um, yeah. So this yeah. If you're buying a gauge set, I cannot stress this enough. Spend the extra money and get good gauges. Buy good gauges and buy good hose. Don't buy cheap hose, don't buy cheap gauges. If you buy cheap gauges and you buy cheap hoses, you're gonna be chasing dangerous tiny leaks scenario. The phone rings, the goddamn phone rings. The dog's choking. Oh! Shut your valves off real quick. Run in the house. You get tied up for five hours at the emergency vet because the dog ate a blanket. Well, during that five hours, your gauge, which you should leak check every time you hook it up to a bottle, actually is leaking secretly out of the fittings or out of the gauge itself. You come home, you go back into your workshop, you light a cigarette, and you make the evening news. Buy good gauges that don't leak. Leak check every time you swap bottles, 
every time you come into the shop and you notice that your gauges are a little funky, leak check. I had a bottle leak from this fitting, the actual factory fitting. I'll, I'll put a picture of it in the, uh, in the video. Always check your bottles. Okay, I think that's gonna be it for part one, one of the video. I've, I've, I've rambled on for a while and I haven't actually done anything. Um, I need to go, I need to, the next part of the, the next video is gonna be me taking this assembly apart and reassembling, uh, reassembling my torch manifold. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to install loose term here. These two oxygen sensor or oxygen condensers. Uh, the fact that they're different manufacturers doesn't matter. They are internally they're all basically the same. There there there's a pump, there's uh, there's a pump, there's a sieve bed, there's a couple regulators, a couple gauges here and there. Um, I actually did shoot a video. I took the cover off of this one and shot a video of it. Um, so there you go. I quit blowing glass in 2005 because I got tired of moving these bottles. And it took me four months of moving these bottles to remember why I stopped blowing glass. Now we're going to fix that problem because I got a little cheddar cheddar from Christmas.